We're going to go into one of our new segments of the show that people have been giving us a lot of feedback on. Combat Corner. Combat Corner. I want to shout out Doug Rose. I've met her on a few occasions. I've actually seen her train in Colorado, and she is a monster. Monster, monster, monster. So I'm going to let Rudy kick off Combat Corner and discuss everything he wants to discuss. Yeah, last weekend, um, Thug Rose got back in the cage, and she fought Amanda Hibas. And they're, she's fighting now at 125, which is a higher weight class for her. She had her last fight against um, Manon Farat in her first fight at 25, and she lost by decision. She came back this, this past weekend, and she won a clear decision over Hibas. So what you're seeing from, Thug, from, from Rose, her power is not translated. I watched that fight. The stuff that she landed on Amanda Hibas would have put out a bunch of girls at 115. And I don't see that her power translate. I also am wondering what's going on with her coaching situation because she didn't come to, she didn't fight Farah with uh, Trevor Whitman. And she didn't fight um, Hibas this past weekend with Trevor, with Trevor Whitman. And there was an interview I saw where she wasn't going to talk about that until after. But I'm going to presume that she and, Tre and is no longer working. I'm going to presume until I find out otherwise that she's no longer working with Trevor Whitman. And I saw lots of holes. Like, Donald, you remember the kick she landed on uh, Jay Lee Wong in the title fight? Yes. Yeah, so that, that kick, that front kick that she put right down the middle with her front, I mean, it was, it was ridiculous. That kick was there all fight against Amanda Hibas, and she never threw it, not one time. And, and so while she got a quality win, um, she then called out at the end uh, the winner of Aaron Blanchfield and Farrat, who are fighting actually tomorrow. I'm, I'm sorry. I have to reword on this this Saturday they're fighting in Atlantic City, and that's going to be a heck of a card because there's there's three good fights on the top of that card. But overall, I, I was happy to see Thug Rose win because I thought if she lost, it might be time to hang it up. However, you know, I I've always enjoyed watching Thug Rose fight. When she's mentally okay, she seems to perform very very well. But she, you know, people who know MMA know that she has these bouts of mental pressures or anxieties, and it, it certainly has an impact on her. Um, <clears throat> I am interested to see, find out for sure if she's not with Whitman anymore because Pat Barry's her husband, but Pat Barry doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. Like, he says some shit in the corner that you're sitting here like, bro, are you actually watching the fight? You remember when she fought um, Carla Esparza, Don? Yes. And he was saying, they're booing her. No, you dumb fuck. They're booing Thug Rose. Rose had to make that fight. She gave away a belt in a fight she got hit 20 times in, in five rounds, because she didn't throw a goddamn strike. She didn't throw a punch. And he's sitting here saying, you're doing great, you're doing great, while Whitman is saying, you need to start throwing some shit. And she never did and lost her belt because of that. So I don't know what's going on. I, I hope that Whitman is going to be back with her, but I don't think so. And I, I mean, Pat Barry, I don't know what the hell, he, he, he's just fucking clueless when it comes to, you know, in in cage coaching, that's for sure. Um, <clears throat> this weekend, the UFC's in Atlantic City, so you got Blanchfield fighting for Raw. It's a big, big fight at tw at uh, twenty five. You know, you have uh, Vicente Luque against Joaquin Buckley. For those of you who don't remember, Joaquin Buckley landed that ridiculous spinning back kick on Impe, whatever the hell his name is. The guy who was the champion at PFL at light heavyweight knocked him starch out cold. Kasag, I think that's how I pronounce his name. Um, and then finally, you have Chris Weidman. I was at the fight where Chris Weidman broke his leg against Uriah Hall in, in Jacksonville. It was the most horrifying thing I'd ever seen. He throws one kick, gets checked, and his leg snaps in half. I don't know how this man fights again. He fought, I believe, if he, he, he fought. He has fought since and did not look good. I hope he has a better performance. He's fighting Bruno Silva. Tough, tough Brazilian dude. We'll see what happens with Weidman, but I'm always happy to see Weidman fight. I just hope he gets a W. And personally gets a W so that he can retire. Because I'm tired of seeing guys who are old in the tooth get a W and think that that means that they can keep fighting. Because <laughs> it doesn't. It's, it's the opportunity to retire with a win. And then finally you have uh, 
bare knuckle B- BKFC is this weekend and um, actually it's on Friday night in New Mexico. The championship fight, if you remember John Dotson from the UFC, he is the flyweight champion and he is flourishing in BKFC. Because if you remember John Dotson, that bull, that dude was quick as hell. He's 39 years old and still quick as hell. So that's going to be an interesting fight he's got with Dagoberta Alguero. Alguero's 5'8". Dotson's 5'2". So I'm curious to see how the, that difference in size it goes on this fight. Excited to see it. And I will definitely report back next week. But that's all I got. Awesome. Thank you for watching Come On Now, the podcast. Please be sure to subscribe, like, comment, and ring that bell so you get up-to-the-minute updates when we publish new content. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram at Come On Now Podcast and X and TikTok at Come On Now Pod. Thank you again for supporting this channel.